we really appreciate all of the support that we're receiving from the community, both in Ukraine, in Eastern Europe and Western Europe, and also, of course, in the United States of America. We have a terrific panel of guests lined up today, and I hope all of them will be able to join us throughout the webinar. Uh, first, we have Dennis Jitsisson, uh, the Director of Corporate Relations of US-Ukraine Business Council. We also have Rob Ratterman, who's joining us, I believe, from Australia today, who is the co-founder and CEO of Weights Sensor Technologies, a company that has footprints both in the US and in Ukraine. We also have Alexander Yuchak, who is the CEO of the Industrial Automation Association of Ukraine. And we hope to get some participation from Luigi De Bernardini, the CEO of AutoWare, and Andrei Kalantarenko, who is the CEO of Terawatt Group. My name is Alex Chosovsky. I am the moderator of today's webinar. And again, I want to say thank you very much for all of you that are taking the time out of your busy schedules to join the discussion and hopefully participate in the conversation about how we can prepare for the recovery in Ukraine once the fighting stops. So we have some of our guests joining us here today. I can see Luigi, Andre. thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate your participation. Um, uh, Rob and Alex, if you guys are ready, we'll go ahead and start with the content. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. So Alex, while we give Denise a little bit more time to join us today, if I can ask you to perhaps kick off our conversation by discussing essentially, you know, what are the initiatives that are currently being looked at by the Ukrainian government? What are the Ukrainian industrial automation communities doing in terms of preparing for the save, survive, and win mentality that's going to obviously be a very important factor in driving the recovery in Ukraine once the fighting actually stops? Alex, you're Chuck. Would you like to uh, turn your camera on and talk a little bit about the rebuilding? Uh, yes. So you might uh, you propose me to uh, to start this session. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, I'm director of Association of Industrial Nations of Ukraine. Um, and uh, why we call this uh, webinar recovery? Because uh, everybody knows that we have a very difficult time today. So we have war, very uh, yeah, uh, very difficult time. And, uh, but everybody today um, think also uh, about what will be the time after the war. And uh, the level of Ukrainian government, we had this year uh, already two big manifestations in Lugano and uh, in the last uh, months in Berlin, where uh, Ukrainian government uh, started to talk about recovery, what will be the, after the war, what will be the recovery project, and so on. Yeah, so I think uh, at the level of business, because we are a business community, we uh, cooperate with many international partners. Uh, we should think as well uh, what uh, should be done uh, after the war and maybe also during the war because we have many crazy crises like today, uh, uh, crisis situation with uh, energy, uh, critical infrastructure. So we should consider some some initiative, some project, what can be done uh, now and after the war. I think this is a main idea to organize this webinar. Absolutely. Was there any additional details that you can share with us about some of the key initiatives that APAO, the Association of Ukrainian System Integrators, is uh, proposing for when the reconstruction period after the war begins? Yeah, exactly. I, I will say about that in my presentation. I, I just don't understand if uh, this is my turn or you will start with, uh, with other speaker. <laughs> of course. Uh, in in the absence of Denise, I think it might be good for you to set the stage for uh, the rest of the conversation. Uh, so uh, if you don't Denise, mind sharing your slides and talking first, please. Yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, Denise should be should hear. Uh, I'm just looking him in uh, in the list of uh, presenter. Uh, but I just show that maybe there's some problem with one speaker. Uh, I don't see him just yet. He he may join later on, and I'll come back to him to talk about his perspective as well. So I think at this point, if you can continue your presentation, 
I believe you prepared okay, some no slides. Problem. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, so I will share my my screen. Just a minute. Do you see my screen? We do. Yes. OK, so I will start with uh, my presentation. Uh, so at the beginning, a few words about um, our association and what we are doing and uh, how it was organized this, this, this webinar. So in fact, uh, our association is the leading association in Ukraine in disaster information. We unite more than 50 members and we have founders as well of uh, uh, Industry uh, 4.0 here in Ukraine. Uh, our role uh, mainly about ecosystem building. Uh, we uh, we also try to develop what we call collective assets, like tool mechanisms to develop uh, ecosystem, uh, innovative ecosystem in manufacturing, standard infrastructure. So what we uh, understand today under industry 4.0 or advanced uh, manufacturing, and the association do a lot of activity. Uh, around uh, markets, education, uh, accounting, uh, promoting local innovate, innovators uh, for 4.0 uh, standardization. Uh, we do many activity in the international cooperation and so on. Uh, well, talking about war in the Ukraine. Uh, well, I know that the situation uh, stays uh, very difficult. We, we are not talking about uh, business continuation, of course, in the region affected by the war. And um, uh, our uh, members, they today relocated in safe regions, the center of Ukraine, Western Ukraine, many companies located in neighbors country in Eastern Europe. But, uh, well, uh, when you're speaking about overall situation, about uh, 40, 50 uh, percent of uh, small, medium enterprise stopped the operation. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this is big, uh, it's a uh, uh, for our economy, and uh, maybe we are talking how to react, how we are like association, or I am also, I forgot to say that I'm a head of Ukrainian cluster alliance, which unite today uh, almost 40 uh, clusters uh, through Ukraine. Uh, but uh, in every cluster, in every business, we have the same issue, like a uh, lack of uh, orders, like uh, this is, uh, the concept is, is, is unemployment, and uh, of course our risk is uh, how to organize um, export and uh, internationalization activity. Uh, it's not just about tour export, but uh, also we mainly talked about integration into value chain, uh, European value chain, global value chain, uh, how to operate in the project with a different uh, kind of um, contractor or system integrator. So I, I really appreciate uh, the message uh, which was proposed by Luigi de Bernardini. He will be today after, uh, yeah, in this uh, presentation today because he 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 was first to propose this slogan, uh, "Professionals for Ukraine." So this is the answer to the question: How to be resilient in the war time? And uh, this is uh, the sense of the message is enough clear. The professional of the world uh, in different country, in different communities, should be united. Uh, and to help each other. And today, uh, when Ukraine is in a very difficult situation, professionals are united to help uh, Ukraine. And we really appreciate uh, this uh, this approach. And uh, we, um, as association and Ukraine Cluster Alliance, we do a lot of uh, international activity. We had many meetings, and just uh, today I'm sitting in a hotel in Kyiv where we've got uh, International Trade Council. Uh, it was the same organization who helped us organize uh, first Big business forum in Turkey. You see the, on the picture, uh, yeah, participant of business forum in uh, Istanbul. We had uh, the same business forum in the last month in Tallinn. And uh, we try to promote our member and to organize different kind of cooperation uh, through, through the worldwide. And I think it's uh, maybe too early to to talk about uh, invest to Ukraine. We 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 develop rather narratives uh, how to save how to save our uh, industrial innovative ecosystem, how to survive, how to help to survive uh, our members, small and medium enterprise, uh, business support association clusters. Yeah, and how to win, uh, it means how to help our critical industries like, uh, you know, food, uh, because it's not about food security, about uh, manufacture of clothes, uh, critical infrastructure, how to uh, 
how to uh, survive and then to, to win. And we are talking about new project uh, and program with relevance to recovery program. Uh, to do that, we developed um, uh, 10 proposals, especially in advanced manufacturing. Uh, this is document existing in English, will be distributed to all participants of our webinar. Uh, and in fact, this is like, uh, you know, top down initiatives derived to concrete projects and well aligned with government uh, program because it is, as I mentioned, it, a government uh, proposed uh, this year uh, big, it's a multi billion, 100 billion uh, dollars program of recovery of Ukraine. So we as business association, we try to be aligned with this big uh, government line. Uh, I think this decision, which, which uh, we'll talk more about that, about this program. And so what kind of project we consider? A different one. For example, today we have a really critical situation in uh, with critical infrastructure. We are talking about uh, creation of emergency, emergency, emergency support center, which they can help uh, to our uh, utilities at the municipal level or as a kind of critical infrastructure, uh, how to better react to some uh, alarm situation, how to deliver electrical uh, equipment and uh, control system and so on. And especially in the focus of this webinar is our proposal of outsourcing in industrial uh, engineering. So we developed a marketplace uh, of Ukrainian developers and system integrators we include today uh, almost 100 of innovator, uh, innovative company like developers, but also uh, uh, more than 20 big system integrators combining together uh, almost uh, 400 free engineer. Uh, so our proposal is to, to cooperate at this level, yeah, because uh, in many countries we can uh, realize maybe lack of uh, of engineer, lack of system integrator, and in fact, many of these uh, integrators are ready to, to for uh, collaboration. Uh, so you can go just uh, at this uh, site, the for developer, and it's uh, very easy, uh, very easy to uh, uh, to filter. To you just take your filter, uh, like uh, how uh, what quantity of uh, engineer do do you do you look for uh, what kind of certification experience what kind of plc software they master uh, well typically siemens schneider bb so on and uh, so far you quickly choose your uh, your integrator uh, and then there is uh, all uh, contact data you, you can contact us uh, as directly and just choose choose your partner so uh, as the guys today, they will talk uh, more about uh, the possibility to cooperate because, of course, there is question of risk. If it's safe, it is not safe. Uh, what is qualification level and so on? So I think it will be uh, as a testimony today. So I will not take uh, too much time for that. But uh, once again, we we invite uh, uh, you all uh, collaboration, especially looking for partner in the uh, United States and. Uh, uh, U.S. Uh, sorry, in the uh, European Union, and you find some source of information. Uh, once again, uh, today we have uh, two main uh, initiative, uh, two main kind of needs. It's uh, one first one is about outsourcing of our engineering staff, and second one about uh, common response to uh, um, energy crisis uh, to help to our critical infrastructure. Yeah, this is Oma from my side. Thanks. Uh, Okay, thank you so much, Alex. Really appreciate that perspective. If I can summarize, um, there was a little bit of a technical delay sometimes, but uh, basically there exists a terrific, uh, capable and reliable network of engineering talent and IT professionals in Ukraine that are ready to work. You know, in Western societies, particularly in the United States, the biggest conversation is we don't have enough people to do all of their work. Ukraine has the exact opposite problem. They have many people that are looking for things to do, particularly outsourcing technological projects, engineering work, and they are ready for it. They don't want just donations. They want to be able to earn a living and they want to be able to support their European and American partners. There is 
clearly been a track record of success with projects completed throughout Europe, in the Middle East, and in the United States. And that's actually a great transition. I'd like to invite Rob Ratterman next, the CEO of Waits. Rob, can you talk to us a little bit about your experience before, during, and hopefully what you can expect after the war from an individual company perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and first, just thanks for for letting me speak today. Um, you know, I'm excited to talk uh, to all of you because Ukraine, our Ukraine team is just such an important part of our company, uh, Weight Sensor Technologies. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the co-founder and, and CEO of Weight. So being the co-founder, you know, I've been involved since the very beginning. And, uh, you know, I think I'm in a good position to give some background and tell a little bit about um, you know, how our team's, you know, long history in Ukraine has developed. You know, it's a history that started before, you know, long, long before the invasion, you know, 15 years before the invasion, and endured the upheaval of the invasion, and, you know, to this day continues to, to thrive in spite of the invasion. So, um, you know, I co-founded Waits 17 years ago in the United States. Um, you know, just to give you some background, our products and services help prevent uh, machine failures in industrial equipment. So we do this with um, a series of wireless sensors that we've developed. Those sensors send their data to the cloud, and then in the cloud, it's analyzed by machine learning algorithms, really complicated stuff. Um, and then uh, ultimately, though, it's passed to a, a worldwide team of including a, a team in Ukraine of vibration analysts who communicate with maintenance personnel at industrial facilities to resolve problems before they become catastrophic. And so, you know, our Ukraine team has just been an absolutely vital part of each segment of our business um, for our entire history, you know, from hardware development to machine, the machine learning development and general software development. Um, you know, we've got the Ukrainian uh, team of, vibra of vibration analysts in Ukraine. And then all over this, uh, you know, our Ukraine team runs all of our European operations. Uh, so, you know, as you can see, we're we're deeply invested in Ukraine, and Ukraine, you know, has uh, been and will be uh, a big part of our success going forward. So, the key thing I want to talk about today is just the incredible resiliency of our Ukrainian team and the Ukrainian people generally. You know. Um, Many, many years ago, we made the commitment to open our primary European office in Kherson, Ukraine, um, because of its, you know, really because of its people and, you know, their ingenuity and their work ethic. Um, you know, while our operations have grown, um, you know, over the years, starting with one person in the early 2000s to now um, employing uh, 60 people um, in, in Ukraine, you know, we've watched the country of Ukraine blossom into this you know technologically advanced modern country and you know seeing all that threatened by the russian invasion has just you know obviously for all of us has just been heart-wrenching um but watching how our team has survived and thrived during this time has been an inspiration you know to our entire company um you know i'd like to give just a quick overview of just kind of our experience with with ukraine uh, before during and after the russian invasion um, it's been really, really impressive, and it speaks, like I said before, to the will and the work ethic of the Ukrainian people. So for more than you know, about 15 years before the invasion, you know, our, your, our Ukraine team handled every challenge we put forth to them, um, you know, led by our uh, VP of European Operations, um, Ilya Smolenko. Uh, you know, our team and its responsibilities there have just grown exponentially over the years. Um, you know, we employ top engineering and operational talent from around the world and our Ukraine, you know, talent equals or exceeds that talent we have in the rest of the world. We've always just been super impressed with the quality and the talents of the people uh, in our Ukraine um, operations. So, um, you know, before the, the war, like I said, we grew the Ukraine team to be about 60 people. Um, eventually, you know, they're developing all the web and data software for, for weights. Um, in addition, we then asked um, you know, the Ukraine team to you know, run all of our rapidly expanding European operations, including you know, sales, analytics, marketing, uh, installations, service, et cetera, for our product all throughout Europe. Um, you know, while most of our hardware uh, development is done in the United States, we also, uh, just shortly before the war, 
uh, hired some uh, talented hardware engineers in Sumi, uh, Ukraine, who are creating a, a series of new products for us. And these products, um, you know, were not only designed in Ukraine, they're actually being manufactured today in Ukraine. So, um, you know, we're very much in business in Ukraine right now. So, you know, before the war, we had this, you know, rapidly expanding, cohesive team of, of talented people um, that were running all the just the the whole operations of our company. Um, and then came this this terrible invasion, and our our team was you know kind of very briefly thrown into disarray. You know, from our home city in Kherson, which you know is the only major city occupied by the Russians. Many of our colleagues there, you know, were forced to flee to other parts of Western Ukraine, some to Western Europe, you know, while others remain trapped in, in Kherson. Um, the key takeaway to all of that is that, you know, our Ukraine team's productivity during all of these transitions never missed a beat. Um, you know, in the first weeks of the conflict, our Ukraine um, team, you know, continued working in the basements of their apartments while the bombs are falling around them. Um, it was just an incredibly, I mean, scary time for, for them, obviously, and, and heart-wrenching for us to have to watch from afar. But, you know, even while those bombs were falling, they were committing new code, rolling out new features, and it was very, very moving for the rest of our, our company to watch, um, just to see them, um, you know, fighting through this, this situation. Um, you know, and in the weeks following the, the, the invasion, you know, we, they, we were able to organize the teams to work remotely. And just, just three weeks after the invasion, we were back to 90% of the productivity we had compared to our productivity before the war. So, and, and now, um, you know, months after the invasion, you know, we're at 100%. Uh, you know, our people have migrated to other parts of Ukraine, but we continue to operate normally. Uh, it's just really been unbelievable to watch, uh, really. It's, it's been, been really neat to see. Um, you know, it surprises me every day when I think about what our friends are going through, you know, living under, um, you know, Russian occupation or Russian bombing and how they're absolutely thriving and producing and, and developing and growing in this difficult time. So similar to how, uh, you know, the world has watched Ukraine fight back against the, the Russian aggressors, you know, we, we have watched our team battle against fear and uncertainty to come out on top to, again, to, to survive, to thrive and and to win. Um, you know, for for years before this, when when people would find out that I had a, an operation in Ukraine, they would always ask me kind of, you know, why Ukraine? And um, my answer to that question is the same today as it was 15 years ago, and that's it's the people. Um, you simply can't find a more dedicated, hardworking, ingenious group of people in the world. Um, and you know, certainly now it's a people who've been tested by you know the tested by the fire of war. So you know, as we look to um, this recovery plan. Uh, that you're speaking of, you know, we know that it will be made reality by the Ukrainian people themselves. And, you know, and we um, at Weight Sensor Technologies, you know, we'll be continuing to invest in our growth and operations in Ukraine. And, you know, I would just encourage other companies to do uh, to do the same. Um, so, you know, that's thank you for letting me speak today. And, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have or or, or whatever you'd like to however you'd like to proceed. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. I'm sure many of our guests will have questions for you. I encourage you to reach out to Rob directly. But I just want to say, first of all, uh, thank you for continuing to have the confidence to maintain operations and, and keep going. It sounds like a tremendous win on your part to be able to get back to 100% um, you know, throughput and, and productivity. You said three key words in my mind, and that is uh, resiliency, it is reliability and it's willpower. And that I think sums up exactly what your last point was, which is it's really key for people to uh, understand that things, although disrupted, are still going on in Ukraine and it is worth investing on. So thank you very much for taking the time to Absolutely. speak. My pleasure. Um, 
I do see Dennis that you joined us. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your participation. Uh, in in your perspective, I'd like to ask you to share just a little bit of what does the recovery program actually entail? How can people get involved and what can they expect as the recovery really gets underfoot in Ukraine? You are muted, Dennis, so if we can just unmute. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate the opportunity and a special thanks to, to organizers for organizing such a great event. So uh, a few words about the U.S.-Ukraine Business Council, the, the, the organization that I represent. So the U.S.-Ukraine Business Council was established in 1995 by U.S. companies in order to facilitate the uh, U.S. companies to do business in emerging market in Ukraine at that time. So for today, we have more than 220 members, global companies, international members, international companies, Ukraine companies as well, that are doing business here in Ukraine and that are doing business uh, in the United States as well. Despite the difficulties, despite the, uh, despite the shellings here in Kiev, in Ukraine, I should admit, uh, and, I, and I, I suppose I do concur, uh, um, Rob as well, that our companies, the international businesses, they are very resilient. They are very, um, they are very stubborn to do business here in Ukraine, and they are proceeding. They are proceed to do business here in Ukraine. The agricultural companies, uh, IT companies as well, and all other companies from all walks of of economy as well. So, in regards to economy, yeah, this is the the, the topic number one uh, for for a lot of conferences, for a lot of meetings, recovery and reconstruction as well. So, of course, uh, since the invasion has started since February, since uh, February 24th, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of facilities, energy facilities, they are, they have, they are, they has been totally destroyed. And right now, the priority number one, not only for the Ukrainian government, not only for Ukrainian society, but for the businesses, Ukrainian businesses, international businesses, is of course reconstruction and development. Once again, I will use the word that uh, Rob already mentioned today, the um, uh, resilience. So the um, Ukrainian Ukraine society, if I may say, so they uh, developed a, a few objectives for the reconstruction and the development. They are resilience, recovery, and of course, modernization and growth. In regards to the modernization and growth, this is uh, the the invasion that started opened, if I may say so, of course, nobody will support me, opened um, a window for, for opportunities for international businesses and for local businesses as well to modernize all the energy facilities we had here in Ukraine, to modernize all the infrastructure that is completely destroyed right now, and so on and so on and so on. So right now, the... Uh, we have a top a top priority list, if I may say so, top ten priority list for reconstruction and development. They are, of course, and uh, this are, of course, the uh, defense and security, because the defense and security will be topic number one for years to come for Ukraine. Um, infrastructure, energy, energy and uh, energy and infrastructure as well, because as you all, uh, I suppose, know that. Uh, even here in Kiev or in the central in the central part of Ukraine, we have um, problems with the electricity, with water supply sometimes, and so on and so on and so on. So this is priority number two. Priority number three is of course the uh, such uh, such areas as healthcare. A lot of hospitals are totally destroyed, so and they also need reconstructions. The priority number four is, of course, the agriculture. Uh, as you know, they, a lot of businesses, a lot of governments, uh, they are usually saying that Ukraine is a grain basket number one for Europe and the world. A lot of, great, a lot of agricultural fields are still, uh, still mined, and the mining needs to be done by, the, uh, by international organizations and, of course, Ukraine government organizations as well. And I do know a lot of businesses, international businesses, they are already engaged in the mining. So, but in any case, uh, agricultural, this is one of the top 10 priority. 
Um, then, of course, IT business. As Rob already mentioned, I'm I'm terribly sorry for being late. As Rob already mentioned, that IT business shows its rec- its resilience because the guys guys really were working in in the basements with with poor connection and so on. But in any case, they they showed not only the resilience of uh, the IT business, but they showed the resilience of the Ukrainian society. That whatever the cost, whatever the price, we we are still working, we are still operational, and we will proceed to 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 carry on, if I may say so. Uh, the next uh, the next area that uh, that I would like to mention is of course um, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, logistics part. So since the invasion started, the Black Sea is still closed. And of course, a lot of businesses, they started to develop a new logistic, logistical part, how to export their goods to Europe, how to export their goods to Asia and so on and so on and so on. Of course, right now, the, the question number one for international businesses and for the Ukrainian government is where the budgets will come from. Because I know that a lot of, a lot of US companies, a lot of European companies, they are on on a low start, if I may say so, and they are all looking forward to be engaged in the reconstruction and development. But of course, it is not still clear where the budgets will come from. Whether the but where it would would it the would the budgets will come from United States or European Union or the UK or G7 countries? This is still under the question. So uh, for now, it is it is um, it is it is clear, and I can and I can say and I can say that that it will be the joint budget of United States, of European Union, G7 countries, and some international financial organizations like International Financial uh, Institute, World Bank, uh, Inter- uh, European uh, Bank for Construction and Development, European Investment Bank, and so on and so on and so on. But of course, we are here in Ukraine, and we still hope, and we hope very much that uh, the uh, the international, the, the Ukrainian international partners, uh, I mean the uh, international governments, will in any case they will develop a scheme. They will develop their own uh, internal legislation how the uh, how to move the Russian assets, the Russian priest assets, to Ukrainian needs. There are approximately seven hundred billion dollars that are frozen by the international partners. This is a huge budget, a huge budget that can be used for construction and development, for uh, local business development, and so on and so on and so on. So, and we are hoping very much um, for that. You you might have heard already that the Canada already developed such legislation that allows the the government of Canada to transfer the uh, the budgets that were frozen, uh, the Russian budget that were frozen to allocate for Ukrainian reconstruction needs. We are hoping to hear that United States will develop uh, such legislation as well. So, and of course, uh, I will give uh, I will give kudos to the European governments as well, because we are hoping for their support very much so i suppose i will stay here for stop here for any qu- questions and uh looking forward for our or our uh chat chat thank you very much denise i appreciate your participation and i think there were a couple of key elements that i'd like to highlight number one obviously it is midterm election day here in the united states and there will be consequences from the outcome of that we hope for the best type of perspective but uh, it's still to be determined how the new government whatever political affiliation it has will take this issue and do they actually turn it into law and do they appropriate the frozen assets uh, of russia and use them for the rebuilding purposes or is there another approach that they decide to take I, I think the key message that I took away from your uh, comments, Denise, is that private enterprise needs to develop their own plans independent of what the governments around the world are going to do. It's going to be a key element in the solution of rebuilding Ukraine, and it has to be a partnership between private and public enterprise in order to see this come to fruition as quickly as possible.
Yeah, Alex, that is correct. And just to conclude what I said, that the, the, the private business, the international companies cannot afford to lose two things, the opportunity and the time. The time is now, the opportunity is now. Absolutely. Thank you so much for providing your comments. Again, I encourage everyone, we'll share the contact details um, of all of the speakers, but if you have any additional questions, please do reach out directly to the speakers. We hope to have some time at the end of the presentations for an open Q&A session, but I wanna make sure that we provide an opportunity to all of our speakers to contribute their perspectives. Next, I'll turn to Luigi De Bernardini. Um, and, and thank you so much, Luigi, for being here today. I assume you're calling in from Italy, and uh, it was such a pleasure to meet you at uh, the Control System Integrators Conference in the United States in June. Uh, I, was, I found your work on behalf of the Ukrainian community to be absolutely inspiring and fascinating. And so I think if you could just share a little bit about the projects and the initiatives that you've been able to uh, accomplish in that regard, we would all benefit from learning more about that. Well, yeah, thank you so much, Alex. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to see you and uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, be able to talk to you. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm speaking from Italy. Uh, I will be leaving to US uh, on Saturday. So <laughs> in a few days, I will be on the other side of the ocean. Um, well, I, uh, first of all, uh, I'm really happy that uh, I see uh, these kind of events uh, happening uh, and uh, and growing, and I see a lot uh, all these um, uh, interna international uh, approach and the reach out, uh, uh, and uh, I really need uh, to, uh, to to make a lot of compliments uh, to Alex uh, Yurchak for all the great things that he is doing with uh, with a pow and uh, on behalf of the uh, ukrainian uh, system integrators i mean you're doing a really great great job and uh, getting great achievements uh what can i tell i mean it's uh, i can tell a little the story of uh, of what i did at the beginning and uh, uh, and couple of initiatives uh, that we started and one is still in place and I would like to see it going much more than uh, what I saw. Uh, so basically, uh, just after the invasion started uh, on February 24th, uh, I just uh, had the opportunity, I mean, I, I just basically read a, a post of a friend of mine uh, on, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, it, it was just posting or reposting something that Alex posted uh, about uh, the need of uh, collaboration uh, from the Ukrainian SIs. And uh, it came to my mind that uh, uh, we were talking a lot about the Russian invasion. And uh, I mean, all of us uh, was thinking, uh, what can we do personally to help uh, the Ukrainian people? Because we felt uh, so close to them and, uh, and the war is uh, so close to us. I mean, it's something that it was totally unexpected and that we thought probably that uh, it could never happen. Uh, but I thought that being involved in CSIA, the Control System Integrator Association, I've even thought that uh, there's a different dimension that we can leverage, and it's the dimension of the professional association. So uh, what can we do beside what we can do personally as an association, as a, uh, professionals around the world? Can we uh, join together? Can we put our effort together and try to help our colleagues or work with our colleagues, provide them support, any kind of support that they may need? Uh, uh, not at the political level, not at the, just at professional level, because I believe that uh, in, uh, especially at the beginning, uh, now it's a, it's a long time, things are a little changed, but at the beginning, I think that one of the important things for Ukrainian uh, uh, colleagues is to have a kind of a normality of, of work that can keep their life going and can give them a, a, some kind of, a, a, let's say, a idea of, a, of a normality or at least of scope and hope. And, uh, and so I reached out to, to Alex and we started to work on a, a couple of uh, ideas uh, one uh, came out to be professionals for Ukraine, a kind of slogan that I started to use to promote professional collaboration with the Ukrainian uh, companies. We put together uh, the uh, 
first draft of a list of uh, Ukrainian system integrators that had resources that uh, uh, could collaborate with the foreign companies that now has become something bigger and uh, more complex and organized, which is land for developers. It's, uh, it's great work. And then I reached out to a few organizations. Uh, first, the CSIA, because I was personally involved, I was a past chair of, uh, of the organization, but even to MESA, to ISA, uh, to uh, VDMA in, uh, in Germany, and, uh, uh, and asked, asked them to promote the, um, the, the, the initiatives, uh, or at least to promote the ideas and the, the webinars that we did and, uh, and the need of collaboration. And uh, we, could, uh, we, we got a good traction. The other thing that we did uh, with the CSIA was uh, 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 to give uh, uh, to Ukrainian SIs uh, free membership to CSIA in order to uh, facilitate uh, the networking uh, between uh, the Ukrainian SIs and uh, SIs from uh, other uh, countries or uh, uh, continents around the world, mostly US, but not only US, uh, Australia, Asia, Europe as well. Uh, we had Andre uh, participating to the conference uh, that was absolutely great. And, uh, and we tried to, to, to promote the network. Uh, I'm not so happy about the results. I mean, there's a lot of talking, uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 good feelings on it, but in terms of uh, real collaborations of contracts, uh, which then is something that uh, you can measure, uh, uh, despite the commitment, uh, I, I was hoping really to get more traction. I know that it's difficult. I know that there's a lot of uncertainty. I know that the global economic scenario is uncertain. There's a recession, there's inflation, there's a high cost of energy. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that is making things complex. But I even believe that uh, there's a big need and one of the biggest needs that any of system integrator has is finding resources and we have a pool of resources that are available and so I, I believe that we could as professionals do more. The other initiative that I would like to mention is uh, uh, One Age for You, uh, that is, stands for uh, One Hour for Ukraine. It's an initiative that I launched with my company, and uh, then I promoted at CSIA, got some traction. Uh, there were uh, uh, some other companies uh, that joined that, and it's be the concept behind that is that uh, we, as a company, we uh, give the possibility to our employees to work one extra hour and instead of getting paid, put the money, their uh, salary in a bucket uh, for to create a fund uh, to support uh, APAO or any other organization that they want to uh, support. The company itself basically doubles the fund that is collected and then give it, uh, transfer it uh, to uh, any organization that they would like. It's a uh, it's donating money, so it's uh, just creating funds. I believe that that's part of something that is needed uh, from uh, from Ukraine, from uh, our colleagues, uh, from APAO, from the organization to fund uh, all the initiatives. But it's a way to do that, uh, basically donating effort and work. So it's done in a professional way and not just a money why we money wise, uh, which is uh, some way easier. Uh, I know that uh, we got some results on that, uh, that uh, we collected some funds uh, that helped uh, Alex uh, to uh, continue their activities, uh, to help uh, some members. Uh, and I would like uh, to see a little more traction on these, so I'm continuing to promote that. That's basically the two initiatives uh, that, uh, uh, that we did. I know that in CSIA, for example, there's still a lot of discussion. There's a, I mean, the discussion is still ongoing, and there's a lot of uh, debating and uh, and uh, uh, talking about uh, how to collaborate uh, with uh, with the Ukrainian SI. So it's something that is not dropped and uh, forgot. It probably take uh, uh, some time to get some momentum, and we need to find a couple of right examples, uh, uh, you know, success stories uh, to start and tell, and then it will get traction and get uh, and move on smoothly. Yes, absolutely. First of all, I want to say thank you for the work that you've done. Both of the initiatives are really um, examples of what everybody else should be trying to do for themselves. 
I completely agree with you that so far, uh, I wish there was more action and less talking. Uh, it would be nice to see it actually turn into something more tangible. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have this webinar today is to both show ongoing support for the community in Ukraine and to issue a call for action. As Dennis very eloquently said, the time is now, the opportunity is here. You need to actually put something in place. It's not just uh, enough to just talk about it. You've got to actually commit resources, time, money, whatever it is that you can bring to bear to push the cause forward and, and, and really uh, show the Ukrainian people as a whole that the community continues to be behind them in more tangible ways. Um, Luigi, one of the things that you mentioned that really, I think, has been, in my observation, the biggest obstacle is the concern about the instability in the country and companies that are not willing to actually pull the trigger to issue projects over there because they're not sure about the continuity of the work. Or is it going to be passed off to a different team for implementation? And then who's going to bear responsibility? And so I'll turn this topic over to Andre. I, I know that you and I have been talking about this issue quite a bit. Andre, uh, Terawatt Group, I think, is a really excellent example of why this can work. You know, you obviously had offices in Mariupol originally. You're currently located out of Dusseldorf, Germany. But talk a little bit about your experience and what you've been able to accomplish before the war, during the war, and what you're looking forward to after the war. Andre, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Alex. So first of all, I am really glad to see Everybody, and uh, once again, thank you for really all of you. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you, Alexander. Alex, really, you do, I think, uh, all the best. And uh, uh, I, I think today everybody feel what does it mean? Because really, not everybody think in the same way. But uh, for us, it's very important to understand that we are not alone. That's why, thanks once again. So if you're not against, uh, I will try to demonstrate because we prepared one short presentation and uh, maybe it's easier to uh, show uh, what are we doing at this moment and uh, what we continue uh, doing and uh, what uh, really what steps we provided for our uh, safety and for our customer uh, safety. And uh, I hope I can demonstrate, but it looks like no, yeah? Is it possible that we need to make Andre the presenter so he's able to share his slides? He presenter, he presenter. Okay, now very good. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, now, now it's okay. Okay, I hope we see it. So uh, I don't want to touch items uh, who we are and what are we doing. So yes, our main business is automation, and we created this company 18 years ago. 18 years ago, and uh, I hope it was quite successful business. And uh, uh, we at this moment uh, we have status from different vendors, and uh, really we are proud of our cooperation and. Uh, uh, yes, our big biggest customer was uh, located in the eastern Ukraine, and uh, we are industrial automation company. And most of our customer it's uh, metal and mining. And unfortunately, at this moment, everybody uh, knows those uh, plant like Azovstal, and uh, yes, Azovstal, Ilich, Zaporizhstal, uh, Krivirik. Uh, in the past was our biggest customer on the territory of Ukraine. And uh, yes, uh, on this slide also, on this slide we show that you can sub subcontract us uh, for absolutely different things, but uh, first uh, uh, months after invasion, really we focused not for business, we focused for evacuation of our people because more than 50 employees lived in Mariupol in the past. And that's why, uh, really, um, for you, you know, and uh, it's not necessary to explain what does it mean. And uh, you see a lot of uh, you know, you see a lot of you know, on TV in on the internet. And uh, yes, we know our our people, and uh, that's why uh, during first days 
and for the first months we were focused only for it. And uh, uh, on these slides also very well known what are we doing and also we are doing programming, but uh, what is really interesting at this moment that uh, one company in our group is focused not only for automation, uh, they are focused for civil and mechanical engineers, for CFD modeling, uh, for residential design. And what does it mean for us? Uh, if this company received some orders, uh, automatically we can make the next steps, steps uh, with electrical and automation. That's why we include in our presentation those slides. And uh, uh, also we explain for our customer why it's safe to work with us. And uh, after evacuating people uh, and during even during this period, we have to show our existing customer that we are still exist and we can care about uh, continue project about warranty and even if you you trust us you can provide new orders and uh, yes uh, I, I think most of our customer and uh, most important our customer understand what kind of situation we had and really we care about all projects and all existing projects which we have. And uh, here uh, we can describe what we have at this moment, because mm, we are trying to find customer on absolutely another one markets. And even, uh, yes, it's easier to find customer uh, in the countries uh, which we named ex USSR or ex CIS countries because we have uh, more or less the same standards for working, which we already know. And also, uh, even in this case, we have to show and uh, we have to explain. So, uh, what we can do? So, after invasion of Russia, we continue and we really fulfill all obligations. Uh, also, in the past, we had the example during working with COVID because, yes, our headquarters and our control cabinet shop were, were located in Mariupol. But uh, at that moment, we already had small offices in different cities like Zaporozhye, Krivirik, Dnipro, and uh, quite big office in Kharkiv. And uh, this experience was very really interesting for us and it it helps uh, up to this moment to continue cooperation. So also we lost our facilities for control cabinet assembly, but uh, at that moment also we already had example for cooperation with one of the Polish manufacturer. And uh, we agreed that based on our design, we can do our we can do uh, cabinets and uh, they support us and at this moment we made these cabinets for one of our customer this customer is a german company john oem and end user is located in india and we have these examples uh, today also you know and uh, the previous uh, speaker already tell about problems which we face at this moment with electricity, with the heating, and that's why we have to care about this one. Uh, and uh, also, it uh, I think uh, one of the case and uh, very important for us, for our customers, that our German uh, company, legal entity, was founded nine years ago, and. Uh, Yes, we had just few persons here which uh, support us, help us, uh, but uh, maybe for us it was a little bit easier than for a, another our colleagues from Ukraine just to continue continue this business and continue developing. And uh, yes, we relocate uh, some of our colleagues not only in the territory of Ukraine but outside of Ukraine and at this moment we have 10 persons here in Germany and uh, uh, we 
if we continue our our business uh, with all stuff which is in Germany as well as well as in Ukraine. Yeah. Very good, Andre. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you sharing that information with us. And I think it's a great example of what Ukrainian innovation and resiliency really mean on the ground. The, the ability to establish a new partnership with Polish companies to serve German companies that then the, the product ends up going into uh, the Indian market is a great example of how the world really can continue to engage with United uh, with with the Ukrainian uh, uh, you know, system integration, uh, industrial automation and technology sectors in order to continue to to provide support to those industries. So uh, if you don't mind turning off the slide share, Andre, um, so that we can spend the last few minutes answering any questions that might come in from the audience. Uh, for those of you that are in the audience today, please enter your questions in the chat function. We'll do our best to address them through uh, all of our participants. Luigi, I see you have a hand up. Did you want to make a comment or do you have a question? No, I just wanted to make a comment uh, um, on what uh, Andre just uh, said. And uh, one thing that uh, I've seen through uh, I mean, the, all this month of collaboration uh, with uh, Alex, uh, with other colleagues, uh, with other companies, other SIs, and so on. Uh, we had several meetings. Uh, we had uh, several. We had uh, some webinars uh, and so on. There was no webinar, no meeting uh, when I heard uh, anything or I saw a picture of. Uh, a destroyed office, uh, a bombed city, uh, uh, something uh, that really happened and that could help them to ask for uh, uh, for support, uh, uh, relying on what was happening. And this, in my opinion, is a, a great example uh, of the proudness of uh, these colleagues and uh, of, of the fact that we are in this uh, situation, with the, which is a terrible situation, we are talking about business and this is in my opinion one of the biggest guarantees that, that they can deliver because they are focused on that they are not asking for support because they are bombed they ask you for support because they cannot they they have capabilities that they have capacity and they can do more and that we can work together and this is something that i was really really always so surprised of because uh, i believe it it's not common. It was easy to just open a presentation, uh, open a power or start a PowerPoint with some pictures of uh, all the terrible things that they are going through. I never saw one. And I just want to tell them thank you for this, because uh, this is the spirit of professional collaboration. Yes, uh, absolutely. Be, I completely Thank you agree. very much. Thank you. Agreed. Well, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, I want to finish the webinar today talking about something that is very current and timely, which has been addressed by the speakers already. This concept of energy, you know, um, infrastructure being destroyed with the winter coming up. It's going to be obviously a very difficult time. Um, what if any speaker would like to add any comments on this subject? What are some very practical immediate needs that we're looking for assistance with or that could be potential projects for companies in this space, whether it's energy, water and wastewater infrastructure or anything else that is currently the greatest need for the Ukrainian people and the country itself. Yeah, maybe I just start to explain situation. Uh, so uh, we have, as I said at the beginning, we have already mobilization of international community. And uh, we know that a big vendor like, uh, you know, Siemens, ABB, uh, Schneider, they are in direct contact with uh, our biggest operator, national operator like DTEC, with Ministry of Energy. And I think, um, well, they already take some measure um, how, to, um, how to cope with this situation, what to do and so on. Uh, we, as a business community, we care more about, uh, you know, small and medium ent enterprises, what I said. And typically, uh, we are talking not about, you know, big transformer or substation or, you know, uh, high high or middle vo voltage uh, equipment. We are rather talking about how uh, about uh, backup supply, like electric generator, let's say, from uh, 30 kilowatt to 
I don't know, to 200 kilowatts. It depends on, on uh, facilities. Yeah, and uh, what what we did already, we asked our member of uh, our community in uh, in APAO, in Ukrainian Cluster Alliance. We gather their needs, and we have already this list of uh, equipment to to be delivered. It's not obvious for free because. Uh, Many our enterprises they, they can't even pay, but uh, the problem is that we have in, in the country total lack, to, total deficit of this equipment, uh, and of course it's uh, it's very disturbing because uh, uh, well uh, even in Kyiv we have uh, many enterprise well uh, everybody uh, uh, population but also enterprise. Uh, several hours per, per day, we, we are without electricity. So it's really about urgent, uh, urgent needs, uh, urgent call to, to action. And uh, we are ready to consider any, any kind of uh, aid here. Uh, typically, we coordinate our action and deliveries with uh, European Commission, with uh, European Cluster, but anybody uh, can, can deliver just, well, because it, it's it's simplified procedure going through custom, so it can be considered like humanitarian aid. There are many, uh, you know, carrier which which delivers this equipment through Europe. So, um, well, this is briefly about the situation. Thank you, Alex. Um, Dennis, did you want to add anything on this front or any of the other guest speakers contribute on your thoughts or ideas in this area? Immediate needs? This is, of course, ju 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 just to chime in. This is, of course, the power generation uh, techniques, equipment that would help people and the businesses to survive through the winter. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. I suppose well, this, is, this, this is a top priority. Completely agree. Uh, I think we want to try to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, I want to say again, thank you for all of you that joined us today. As you can see, we have a very international community behind this project. People are investing and are looking for opportunities to get involved. I highly encourage all of you that are watching this and have been listening for the last hour to take the opportunity now to do something concrete and meaningful, particularly as the Ukrainian community prepares for a difficult winter ahead. So I want to uh, finish up by sharing the uh, information about the next webinar. So here you can see on December 13th, we're going to have a webinar uh, hosted by APAO, how to help Ukraine build more robust infrastructure and industry. We'll explore some of these topics in more detail. So I hope you'll have an opportunity to register for this webinar. And again, I just want to say thank you so much for being here today, for lending your support in this capacity. And uh, we look forward to hearing from all of you and turning words into action. Any last comments by our presenters today before we wrap things up? Yeah, maybe I I'd like like uh, the organizer of this webinar. I'd like to thanks to all our partner because what we are talking about is about hidden potential of Ukrainian uh, uh, engineering uh, resources and also about situation in Ukraine, about the future. It's it's not just uh, future of our country. It's uh, you know it's the future of uh, European and all civilized country. And uh, when we discover this hidden potential to help our system integrate or engineering company, we should understand that in fact they are key element to, to in this recovery project because any big engineer project is impossible without system integrator, without a local engineer. And uh, we try to help them, and it's a really very, uh, very critical mission of everybody. And uh, I really appreciate the help of all our international partners, which already with us on this way, like CSIA was mentioned today, but also Alex Josowski Miller Group, uh, all our uh, member of our community, uh, POW, Ukraine Cluster Alliance, also um, US, uh, Ukrainian uh, Business Council, the Association, thanks uh, all, all partners supporting this webinar. It's really very important to be together today. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for everyone again for being here today, and we're looking forward to seeing you at the next webinar and accomplishing great things together. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.